would like to call to order the June 10th meeting for the Davis There Building Reuse Advisory Committee. Morning in progress. <laughs> I didn't ask you. All right. Um, okay. We're going to pledge the flag and do a moment of silence today. So let's stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If we could have a moment of silence, and Ted would like to say something. Thank you, Debbie. If we could just take a moment to remember uh, a Franklin resident that passed over the weekend. Tom Chandler uh, tragically died in a motorcycle accident on Saturday, uh, left behind three children. And we just want the family to know that we're thinking of them. And his daughter just graduated high school. Uh, his youngest uh, is on my baby with the baseball team. And we're just, um, the news was shocking. Thank you to all the responders that got to him so quickly, but unfortunately, wasn't a good outcome. So if we could just keep him in our thoughts, keep the family in our thoughts, and have a moment of silence tonight, that would be very much appreciated. Okay. Moment of silence. Okay, a note to the residents. All citizens are welcome to attend public meetings in person. To view the live meeting remotely, citizens are encouraged to watch the live stream on the Franklin Town Hall TV YouTube channel or the live broadcast on Comcast Channel 9 and Verizon Channel 29. Meetings are also archived by Franklin TV on the Franklin Town Hall TV uh, channel and shown on repeat on Comcast Channel 9 and Verizon Channel 29 for those who missed the live meeting. To listen to the meeting remotely, citizens may call in using this number 1 929 This will not permit participation in the meeting. <coughs> To participate in the meeting remotely, citizens are able to join a Zoom webinar using the information provided below. Zoom webinar ID is hashtag 814-817-68659. Zoom webinar, webinar link here is, um, let's see https colon slash uso2 web dot zoom dot us slash j slash eight one four eight one seven six eight six five nine all participants who wish to speak during the webinar must enter their full name and email address when joining the webinar all participants will be automatically muted upon joining the webinar. In order to speak, participants who have entered full name and email address will need to select the raise hand function to request to be unmuted. All speakers will be required to state their full name and street address before commenting. commenting. Okay, I think that's it that we have to say. Mm -hmm. So we will begin the agenda. We'll begin with the property appraisal review. <coughs> review. Uh, Jamie, sure. I think that's you. Yep, so thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, through the committee, um, just really quick, we, as the committee last got together a few months ago, we did a property appraisal. Um, the opening letter in here should, I mean, for those of you familiar with appraisal, <laughs> There's a lot of stuff in here that probably doesn't need to be reviewed, but I think the germane point is a couple things. One, um, the value of the property, uh, the Davis there property is a combined uh, 4.6 million. Uh, 
which was not unexpected, by the way. Um, that's what our appraisers have at four downstairs as well, or pretty close. Um, uh, very similar. Um, I would note um, this was based on current zoning. So that is not the highest and best use. Um, if the zoning were to be changed, the appraisal value of the land would obviously go up. But at least the committee and the community has a foundation in which to build off from. Um, I would argue this is the minimum price if the town ever decided to, um, to sell it. This is the bare minimum that would go for. Um, again, if you change the zoning, which I'm not saying you should, but if you change the zoning, obviously the value of the property would go up remarkably. And at that time, we would amend this appraisal um, with, a, with a smaller study to really get what those numbers would be. Um, if you look through the document, um, you can change the assumptions a million different ways. I know some of you have experience in this field. Um, you might be able to tweak some things and get some different outcomes, but the goal of this, pro of this project was to just do a baseline appraisal um, of the property in modern conditions, given the, um, the current conditions of the property that have been done by Ca Castle Booze before. Uh, they did walk through the property with Mike and Kevin um, through the entire building. They could speak to answer any of those questions that you may have on that. Um, and that's really it. I'm happy to answer any questions, but at least everybody now has something on file um, as, as a new baseline for what the value of the property is worth. Thank you, Jimmy. So these people know what the going price is going to be for the parcel of land? They're a licensed company, that's correct. Pardon? They're a licensed company. You have to be a licensed appraiser in Massachusetts. Oh, but I'm saying the ones that we have on the list here that have given the interest, oh. do they know what the um, parcel is assessed for? Well, the they appraisal. do now. <laughs> Well, no, they're I not mean, here. No, well, some are. I, you know, I guess jumping ahead, you know, we talked on the phone earlier. I mean, this is the first that we've seen any other interest in the property. The goal tonight was not to have every property, every applicant come in and, and have an hour long question and answer. Right, right. The goal tonight was to go through the expressions of interest, answer any high level questions, and then the committee has to make a determination, you know, what, what do you want to do next? Okay, so do you want to have groups come in and talk further about the projects? Do you, um, do you want to invite in only one person, one applicant, two, three, all four? I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, so mm -hmm. we're just trying to regroup here and figure out now that we have an appraisal on the books um, with current zoning um, and we have some expression of interest, how does the committee want to move forward? So. Madam okay. Chairwoman, may I just real quick to just, sure. yeah. I think clarify or correct maybe something that Jamie had said. Um, those two values are not to be added together. Oh. That is $3.2 million for the entire site with the building. And then the building is one four added into it. The land is one four as vacant. As vacant? Yep. Okay. So the building is not there, it's just grass. It's $1.4 million to develop nine residential lots. Yep. The entire thing as it sits today is $3.2 million. They're yeah. separate, not to be combined. Okay, 3.2 million total? As, as it sits today, yep. All right, Jamie said four something. Six. So that I added the two numbers to, correct. Uh, in, I added the two numbers together. Yep. Okay, so that makes it 4.6. Yep, but okay. the number is 3.2, according to Mr. Pasuzic. Okay, thank you for that. Yep. Okay. Can I ask a question? Yes, you may. <coughs> Jamie, uh, for the purposes of everybody at home, assessed value and appraised value are two different things. So the appraised value, it sounds like, is coming in a little over $3 million, but what does the town have it as an assessed value currently? So I'm looking up, right? As you 4.7. Four so our assessed value is higher than the appraised That's why I, I added the two unusual. numbers to correctly, thinking yeah. they were pretty mm -hmm. commensurate. Yeah. Okay, because that's unusual. But maybe the appraised value as it stands is because it's a school? <laughs> maybe. It would be it would change, like you said, if the zoning changed? If the zoning changed. Well, it's right now it's obviously tax exempt because it's a school, mm -hmm. and it was appraised as an educational use um, <coughs> under the assessors, the, the town assessors. Mm -hmm. So, um, and their process. It's just, it's that's just why important. I misread the thing. I thought that they were pretty much around the same appraised yeah. values. It's just important for everybody to understand assessed value yep. is, you know, a town valuation for taxes and appraised mm -hmm. value is. 
something different. And it's also not market conditions either, Correct. which is very different. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> just like with a house. Yeah. You know, just like with a house. Assessed value from the town is different from what the bank's going to say yeah. it's worth in an appraisal. That's right. So, what so, okay. they're going to commit. Yeah. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Can I ask a question? Anyone else? Yeah. Sure. So is, is zone for a single family now? Yeah. And you put nine. nine I think nine house lots. According, yeah. We could put. Yeah. That seems... I mean, well, it seems kind of low. I'd right? show up money for 1.5 I mean, it million. seems like if you build nine single family homes in Franklin, I, I don't know if I'm not trying to make. I don't think Chris nor I are making a logical argument. I think we're just. I think we're just saying, based on the current zoning there, you could get nine, nine homes, which is basically it's three and a half acres. So you're basically getting three acre, three lots per acre, roughly. Um, I agree. I don't. Yeah. That's the discussion for the board. Yeah. And a discussion on how you want to use the parcel, but if that zoning fits and that's what the community wants, then you could keep it there, and somebody probably wouldn't economically be able to buy the land and be able to make money back on that house. You'd have to densify the parcel. It seems to me they could e they could easily make money on it because the if they bought that the for that, then they can. I mean, make according it back to MBTA house. communities, you could. Yeah, if you did that, you could get uh, 30, 54 units. No, we don't want that. Right. No. <laughs> yeah. That's a lot of traffic. I don't know. Right. right. <laughs> John, did you want to say? Oh, I'm sorry. No, no go ahead. You're first. Oh, go ahead. I just had a quick Roberta. question. I want to make sure that I understand that these are the only five proposals we have. There are no more coming forward. Is that correct? Well, I want to double check and make sure. We have no more coming forward, just these. No, and, and these are not binding proposals. These are just expressions of interest, interest to right. say, interest, yeah. you know, as a party, we might want to engage with a further process, a further bid. We would be interested in looking at your work. This is what we think could happen, and this is our vision. Okay. Okay. All right. You can hear that a little worse, so. Okay. Jamie, one quick question to the chair. Um, will this go to a town vote? Amongst all the people, or is it internally? <laughs> good question. You guys are throwing some good curveballs tonight. Yeah. This is this going to go to a ballot question? Yeah. <laughs> wow. It's been in the town's hands for 100 years. For 100 years. So I think it should go to the people if it's going to go anywhere. I'm not making that decision. Um, you could do it as a ballot, but I think you'd have to ask what's the ballot question. And well, you know, what, what, what's the question you're asking the voters? Or whatever. But yeah, I just wanted to ask the question. I wasn't quite sure. Well, what would the question part. on the ballot be? Whether we keep the land keep the or land. do we sell the land, you know, with, with, with some, conditions? With putting a promo, uh, proposal together of some sort. But you'd have to hear all the yeah. uh, points of interest. But if, whether you want to sell it. For, if it's only worth 1.4, you keep that property all day long. You don't get rid of it. You hold it for the... Zero dollars. It costs what, 120 grand to maintain the building? Yeah, just to. Yeah. Thereabouts. I that's think that's short money to have said. a piece of property that the town may need in 10 years to get 10, 12 parcels pieced together to get a piece of property like this. You won't, you won't get it for under six, seven million minimum later on in life. Mm -hmm. Just because it's there doesn't mean it has to get built on. That's all, that's all I'm saying. You're absolutely right. You're right. I'm sorry about the curveball. I just nope. uh, that's a great question. I, I didn't anticipate that one, but I mean I think you'd have to ask what's the question you're asking people. Are you putting a debt exclusion on to fix the building? Are you just do we keep it or not? And then if you keep it, what's the second part of that question? Forever or for a length of time? Do you revisit it? I, I don't know. I think these are all while you're on the board and. Ultimately, you're going to have to make a decision as a board to try to give some advice to the town council about what avenues you, what avenues y'all want to go. You know, or you, or you just, you know, I know a lot of people aren't going to hear it, but you take it down, salvage some of the block, the brick, and everything for the future, leave it there, and then you're saving 120 grand a year. Five years later, you know, you already got six, seven hundred grand that you, you already have in your back pocket for something that will potentially be built for the town in 10 years. Mm -hmm. So you could have, you know, your architectural and all your design and everything out of that assembly, out of that money you saved. Mm -hmm. And just leave it vacant. Just a thought. Right. Thank you. 
Thank you. So it was my understanding that the representation would come through the members of the town council and that this committee would make a recommendation to the town council who represent all residents. Mm -hmm. Second thing is that we have some really good interest here, mm -hmm. some really great ideas, and I think it would perhaps um, behoove us to maybe think along those lines as well. Thank you, Roberta. Uh, just a couple Chris. more comments on the appraisal, since it's my life. <laughs> uh, I do see the, the land only, by the way. <clears throat> didn't gloss over the land only. Uh, for those that don't know, I'm a certified general uh, residential appraiser in the state of Massachusetts, and I'm also designated with the Appraisal Institute as an MAI. Uh, I know Mr. Prasuzic, he does very good work. Uh, I have no major issues with the report overall. Just two observations, and I'm not meaning or intending to opine on value, but uh, I, I agree with uh, Pat that I think that the land value conclusion is lower than would be anticipated, even in the standard that uh, Mr. Pazuzuk went about the analysis. I do think the building value, as it sits at 3.2 million, is high. Yeah. Not maybe not by much, but I believe it's a high figure relative to other vacant school buildings we've looked at. In particular, he uses a sale in here of the old Cole Cassidy High School down in Taunton. And I know that that sale data isn't fully accurate. It included another acre of parcel of land. There was a lease in place with the community college. So there's some data in here that, if looked at secondly or a different way, would influence possible conclusions in the report. So mm -hmm. I think the land could very likely come up, and I think the improved value may very likely tick down mm -hmm. if those mm -hmm. were brought to Mr. Patuzic's attention. But that's all. Thank you. Any other questions? These are all great questions. <laughs> I'm wondering, uh, Jamie, yep. another one for you. Sure. Um, if we, we should probably know whether or not we're going to keep the land I before agree. everyone else begins to, you know, explain their yep. process and what <laughs> they would like to do. I, I agree. Yeah. <laughs> and the building, I would argue, <clears throat> to Chris's point a moment ago. I did say when you make when you change some of the assumptions in here, the numbers are going to change. I too was a little struck with the value of the building only because of the 13 years worth of reports Castle Booz did. Um, you know, th there's obviously some um, you know some pieces on the inside that could need some help. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think I think another big decision is not just to keep the land, but what to do about the building. Two big questions, yeah. yeah I, th I think you guys got to make a determination of that um, before moving forward with anything else because um, I think that's where a lot of the um, sentiments are. I think on the parcel that Greg just spoke to from maybe a business perspective, but I think the sentimental value affiliated with the building is a very, very big deal for the community. Um, and um, we are paying about 150 to $200,000 roughly a year in utilities, give or take. Um, we do have to do some capital upkeep. We did hear from Mike about that um, earlier this year. So I think there's some big decisions on, on both of those issues, and I think you're right, Councilor Plague, you're getting an idea from the committee about whether you want to keep the land or not, keep the building or not, okay. kind of gets us down those, those pathways. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Jamie, just correct me if I'm wrong, but I mean, obviously, the charge of this subcommittee is to make formal recommendations to the to the town council. But one of our one of the f you know few recommendations could be keep it. That's right. Right. Like we can say we're in favor of pursuing further A, B, and D, and we're also in favor. We want the council to consider right. keeping the asset. Like we don't we don't have to necessarily say. This is the one and only proposal we want the town council to consider, but we should at least, since we, in my opinion, since we've asked all these people to write up these expressions of interest, I think it would be kind of rude not to at least talk through them and hear a little bit more about it. They took the time to submit this. We've now been months since we last met, and then if one of the recommendations that this group passes forward is, well, we want you to consider keeping it, and here's why, that we would detail. We should at least vet these a little bit, I would think. I agree. I mean, you could have a menu of choices, too. And if there aren't any that seem advantageous, you can just leave those. You don't have to interview those candidates. You can just say, we, we, we don't see a proposal here that works. 
or after discussing it maybe with each proponent at the next meeting, you could also then say, you know, hey, we're going to let all four of you make a pitch to the council or not. You know, I mean, you could do any combination of, of those choices. Jamie, what do you mean that we they would make a pitch to the council? Wouldn't they make the pitch to us? And then we would make a recommendation to the council. But there's still nothing, that's correct, but there's still nothing that would prevent the council from saying, oh, you, you didn't recommend item D, but we want to see item D, so let's have it come back in. You're just giving your kind of um, you know, cursory and primary view of what it is. Yeah, I, I think remember, so. remember, this is at some point if you're going to sell this parcel, you're going to make you have to make a public procurement out of this. So, yeah. none of the people who have filed an expression of interest <coughs> may even bid on it. There may be ten times as many bidders. You don't know. This is just to gauge whether or not in the marketplace what's out there and who's maybe interested in taking on a 100-year-old school and doing something with it. And quite frankly, I'm blown away and really happy that there were four proposals that even came yeah. in that spent a lot of time from some pretty reputable companies um, and individuals that put in some proposals so yeah I'm just answering Ted's question that yeah you you can you can make it any combo of recommendations you want you don't have to make one decision and send it along you can give the council a menu of things to choose from Okay, I thought we were going to be making a recommendation, though, to be honest with you. But you can do that you as did. well. Okay, I, I, yes. No, no, no. Now this has opened it up, can, so we'll have to ask the others. You can do one thing or ten things. <laughs> yes, Chris. Um, I'm going to ask a question that may influence where we go. If the town were to uh, lease or sell the building, are there limitations on what you could do with the proceeds? Do they yes. go into a certain fund? Yes. So uh, if you sell the building, it gets held into a special account. Uh, some of you that have been around for a long time remember the old Pond Street sewer beds. Um, and that land, that money was set off in a special account. It was fully restricted for any other land purchases. That money was then used um, for the, a third of the payment towards the Maple Hill open space parcel. Um, a lease, same thing, not as restrictive. Uh, but it would depend on the conditions imposed on the parcel, but it's fairly pretty restricted and I think a lease there would be a portion of it My guess would go off to pay off some of the utilities or the expenses uh, But obviously to lease it out and, and I'm not saying in all circumstances But uh, there would have to be a relationship between us and the potential lessee about you know ADA accessibility and what other conditions and what other uses of the building that's why a lease probably isn't the best thing to do, um, because it might make you know financial obligation on the town pretty significant. Unless there was some willing person to do the upgrades, um, probably not. But maybe they're willing to do the upgrades while we still owned it. I mean, that that's a little bit more of a complicated endeavor. Mm -hmm. Okay, Chris. Uh, I would say to that point, and to Sam's question, not necessarily leasing the improvements themselves, but entering in a lease agreement for the site as a whole. And you could structure it so that there's maybe low annual lease payments for the first five to ten years while the developer is doing what they need to do. And then those stagger and step up as you get past development, occupancy, stabilization for whatever the development is, reuse or full redevelopment. And then to Greg's point, eight, ten, twelve years down the road, probably more like 50 or 75, <laughs> we still own the land. And we can then pull it back at that point in time after those buildings have moved beyond their useful life. Mm -hmm. And now we as the town could do whatever we want with it at that point in time because it would revert back to us as it was before. And I think that's in a, a creative way to say, hey, these five developers or five development options and say, hey, we could recommend any two, three, four of these mm -hmm. and then still control the site for a very long period of time into the future. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't garner us a lot of money at the beginning, but we get utilization of a site that's underutilized today we take the hundred and fifty thousand two hundred thousand dollars off the expense roll and then we have the ability to reuse it in the future and that would be good to be able to use it anyone else I think this is what tonight is really about is all of our questions suggestions and recommendations so feel free to speak up right now um, I want to hear more about these well Jamie, are we going to ask the people that are here to speak on their projects? There's nothing that prevents you from doing that. I didn't invite all four companies to come here and give a presentation. Because but you did invite some to come tonight? They just showed up. 
because Brad they just lived showed in town up. and sent, they all lived there in okay. Franklin. So they just came down because it was a okay. public meeting. But I will say, if you have questions for me, that's fine. <laughs> I just, I, I just, I'm trying to, I think it's more important, Council of Bradbury, for the committee to get a direction. Do you want to have all four people come in and schedule a half hour, an hour? Do you want to ask questions of everyone? Are there any proposals on here that people don't like? Mm -hmm. um, do you want to sell the land? If you don't want to sell the land, that helps us get a little bit of a direction. Do you want to sell the building, knock the building down? I mean, I just think at some point you got a month left, you got a couple meetings in you, and a few meetings, and I think people have to start getting down to brass tacks about how they feel about how to use the parcel in the building. And we have to start nailing down certainty. Because these folks out here are wasting their time if, if the town's not selling the property. And why have them come back in and give a big speech exactly. yeah. if you're not going to sell it? If you're going to keep the building in perpetuity, and you know you are, for whatever reasons, are fine, then then that's a different scenario to ask the proponents because Chris's exact scenario right there is a question that we need to ask every one of these applicants. Are you willing to forego owning the land to lease it, improve it? That's a big economic risk for them. And I'm, I like Chris's idea a lot. I think that's a wonderful, wonderful, advantageous thing for the town. And and I would be joyful if there was a scenario that got to closer to that. But I think Chris and everybody else on the committee is probably going to want to ask each of the proponents, is that financially feasible for you? Um, it may not be. It could as well. But I think we need to whittle it down. And the committee's got to decide, do you want to keep the land or not? Do you want to keep the building or not? I know it's these are tough questions. I'm not yeah. slighting them. Mm -hmm. But I think the committee's got to start talking openly about what they want to see Davis there for the future. Could I? Okay. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, I, I definitely want to keep the building. Okay. At least looking the way it is on the outside. The facade. Yeah. Yeah, the outside cool. of the building. So, I mean, you could, you could keep most of the land and sell the building, right? You keep the back, the back pot yeah. lots. Yep. And that's still be an asset. Okay. Do we want to go right down the row here and see? Yeah. I mean, it wasn't something you were supposed to decide on for tonight, but if you'd like to give a, an idea of where you're going, um, whether to sell the building, the land, what you would like to do, or what do you see happening? Should we have them talk first, these people? In, in my opinion, I think it's only courteous if yes, they came yeah. before they we make any go out to sure. talk okay. about their, what they submitted. And that, okay. That, okay. That's just my opinion. This is all new to us, folks. So <laughs> that's why we are asking each other what we're doing and all. So how many of the groups are here? Oh, I'm hitting that. Three, two, three. I'm here with, from HFA. From HFA. HFA. So, Penrose, I think, is the only one that. Yeah. Penrose is the only one that didn't. And again, I didn't invite people. I just. Yeah. I just wanted to get a direction. But I thought in the back there was someone. Where yeah, Dean College. Dean College. Oh. Dean College. Well, okay, there what we about go. What about Matt Zajac? Is he here? I, I and anyone else? Yeah. No, Brad and, and. I'm here with the HFA TMC proposal. H. Yeah, That's I've got Hopkins that check. Center. Dean College and. Uh, Brad from Camford. Yeah. Camford Property Group. Camford Property Group. Okay. So Matt Sajak and Penrose are not here. Well, Matt Sajak's proposal was just more of a position. It yeah. wasn't really a proposal. Yeah. I included it, though, because it was a submittal. So okay. I wanted to be okay. fair to it. Yeah. And Penrose is the only other one. Um, and you could see them on the 25th. Okay. I can invite them in on the 25th. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think that makes sense. Okay. Are yes. we in a position to be asking the applicants if they would be willing to entertain a ground lease like tonight like that feels like it's a very big decision that they it wouldn't necessarily be able to answer but are we going to ask <laughs> or no time we... like the present okay well, they're all here is it kind of putting people on the spot asking them they should though. be put on the spot this is a pretty big decision and i think they should be familiar with what they submitted and be able to answer questions and I would say or again, like I said the last time, <laughs> you could wait till the 25th and say, what are you expecting out of, right? Like, Chris? I was going to say the, the caveat would be, would you be willing to entertain a ground lease? It's yes or no. 
not entertain a ground lease at hundred thousand dollars a year for ten years, just would you would you consider it or would you not? And then that would help frame our conversation of let's say we like you know Dean's presentation the so, most, and then we would say well. We so I think what you want to do is you want to walk down each person first, right. so it is a little more organized, and say you know Matt Zajac's proposal is the first one on here. Obviously, it's not really a proposal; it's just a idea, a value, and an idea. Yep. So maybe you want to have Dean College come up, and you can ask them questions for a little bit, and okay. then we'll we'll just okay. go down the list. Okay. Is that fine with everyone? Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. Well, let's have Dean College come forward. I think it's great that they can. Well, some yeah. don't. Some yeah. question. I know. <laughs> Hi there. Hi. Your name? I'm Sandra Kane. Hi, Sandra. How are you? Hello, everyone. Hi, Sandra. Hello. I'm here representing Dean College. Our chairman of the board, interim president at Dean, is on the Zoom. Oh, okay. Um, so he's participating that way and texting me, which is why I've been on my phone back and forth. Um, okay. Yeah, so we were not aware. <laughs> we had not planned a presentation, but I'm happy to answer questions. Um, I could also have him come back at another time if you want to talk yeah. directly with him. Okay, if you could just give us a brief background of what your plans would be or what you would like to do, how's that? Or just talk us through what you submitted. That's okay. Yeah, sure. Um, interestingly, um, the question of lease, as you were talking earlier, um, he was texting me saying, why don't you suggest if you get to go up there that we would be okay with leasing the property? You would be okay. okay. Um, so I answered your question that. Um, from our proposal, you can see that um, we are well aware that the property is the entrance to Franklin. It's also the entrance to Dean College. Mm -hmm. Right. So we are very concerned at very, um, I think we have very similar concerns that you all have about what the, the use of the property, what it's going to look like, what it's going to bring to the town, um, what it would be going forward for your benefit as well as ours. So we are very interested in using the property, as we explained in our thing, in our proposal for an arts hub for the college. So I know you've done some work with our president, our former president, Kenneth Elmore, who I think did an awesome job creating um, connections with the town that we haven't had. For your background, I've been a Franklin resident my entire life, well, 64 years of it. Um, I've worked at Dean College for 20 years, the first 17 under President Rooney, and the last three um, with President Elmore. So I've been directly involved with the college, and when Ken came on board, um, we went out of our way to try to break down some of these, some of these, um, I should call them offenses, between the town. And so I can tell you on behalf of our chairman of the board, we have worked very hard to try to partner with the town and to be the, the partner that we had always hoped to be and I think the town has always hoped for us to be as well. And so we have, um, as soon as the transition came over, we met with Jane and we met with um, Tom, your town council chair, um, to make sure that you understood that we were very interested and expanding on those opportunities and making you know Dean part of Franklin and Franklin part of Dean. Um, and I can tell you my entire life, um, the same. I, um, I did not go to Davis there. My daughter went to Davis there, so I have affinity as well for the school as well as for the town. Um, so when we put our proposal together, um, we tried to think about all those things. Obviously, you know, the building, the building is, is historic, right? We're in a historic cultural district, you know, and of course keeping that intact, if we could, would of course be everyone's first choice. Again, we haven't had the opportunity at this stage to decide whether that can happen or not happen based on you know what you all decide we would like to do with it. But we would be very interested in partnering with the town to come up with a solution that benefited all of us. Um, as I said in our proposal, our focus is mainly on doing a hub and an arts kind of community center, providing um, learning opportunities for our students as well as the town people, and creating, again, a hub of of culture and arts that we have so brought to Franklin. Um, we have, if you know Dean and our, um, and our offerings, we have, 
we've had a dance program for quite a few years. We've um, this year upped some of our other pro cultural pro arts programs, like we now have a VFA in musical theater, and our programs are growing. So our students have a vested interest. The town has an interest, you know. Um, and it, again, it's a cultural district, so what better use of the property um, that would benefit all of us? Again, from a lease perspective, um, we're not, we wouldn't be interested in buying the property to make money for the property. We would, we won't, we would want to buy the property and resell it for more money to someone else. Mm -hmm. We would again want it to be, again, an entrance. We're concerned, what does it look like as you come into Franklin, as you approach the town, and as you approach the college? I mean, if you can see the things that we've done around Dean, I think you can see that we're very clear about um, the look of the property. Um, it's historic, you know. We are a small private residential college. We like that feel. You know, Davis Theater certainly, you know, plays right into that, as well as do the other properties that we have and the ones that surround the town. Um, what else can I tell you? That's good. Tib. Thank you. Uh, thank you for summarizing. I think the. The, mil the multi-million dollar question on everybody's mind <laughs> um, <laughs> is if we went down, you know, hypothetically, went down the road of leasing it to Dean for 100 mm -hmm. years as suggested for a certain amount of money, the ADA compliance, the major issues the building has have to fall on somebody, right? There's gigantic expenses even to make it a cultural mm -hmm. arts center like you're talking about. Mm -hmm. So. And you may not be prepared to answer that tonight, and that's okay, but I just, if you could elaborate a little bit on your thoughts on the money piece, that would help us. Like when you submitted the proposal, was, sure. Dean, was Dean suggesting that Dean is going to invest the capital money needed to bring the building up to code, or is Dean looking more as a partnership, or is the Dean just looking at, we just want to be a tenant and the town has to pay for it. I just, whatever you could give us. Yeah, I believe, I believe, and make sure I say the right thing here. So, <laughs> Sorry to put you on the spot. Well, it would be a partnership, but um, but yes, the dean is, is willing to is is willing to spend money. We're not looking to do it for free, if that's what you're asking. Um, yes, looking to invest in the property, um, as well as you know there are costs associated with you know again I I'm not qualified to make an assessment yeah, on sure. you know that kind of a of a you know whether the building can be made ADA compliant or not. Um, but I'm sure throughout the process. I mean, if we can't do it, and anyone, no one else can probably do it either, we'll right? It so it's going to be like a, you know, whether you can or you can't do it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the college has is invested in it. We've already been through our board of trustees. As I said, our interim president is the chair of our board. He's been in here um, last May when we had a board meeting. Um, I had our, our board members tour the property. So they've all kind of a chance to walk in it, walk around it, um, look at the building. Um, and Debbie, I think you were there the yeah. day that I walked them all through. Um, so they have had a chance to look at the property, and they are, you know, excited about the opportunity, and they do think it fits in with, you know, for us, you know, does it fit in with our mission? Does it, you know, help move us forward? Does it help move the town forward? Does it, you know, when students come here, part of the reason they come here is because Franklin is, is a wonderful place, right? It's a beautiful town. You know, they feel like the warmth of the, you know, the environment. So we're, you know, would like to continue that as well. We have vested interest in that, but yes, they do have a, they do have an interest in that. I thought you were going to ask me, are you going to pay taxes? <laughs> well, that will come up later. Yeah. Um, but they have, the, I've, already, I've already asked the question, so yeah, yeah the, uh, they would be willing to I, pay taxes I, on the property as well. They would be paying yeah. taxes, yeah. Would, yeah. While I still have the floor, so just to clarify mm -hmm. on your proposal, you really are envisioning it being a multi-use space mm -hmm. from reading your proposal, right? You're talking yes. about college level programs that the students at your school are going to use, but also programs that the community, whether for free or whether for a fee, are going to come in and enjoy art exhibits, art space, maker space. Like there's a lot in what you what you sent over and what's being talked about. So I just want to make sure the public understands that is the vision. I appreciate it. Yes, it is. Yeah. The vision is that that you would get as much use out of it as we would. That you know and that our students would be able to partner with you to offer some things and that we you're the community would partner with us, yeah. you know, offering workshops, either giving them or taking them, teaching or learning, um, all opportunities like that. The fascinating part of what you're proposing is it somewhat connects to what Mr. Zajac proposed. Yes, with exactly. It, with it being a, you know, a hub for music and a hub for theater and a hub for the arts and just having it sort of answer the needs of the art and music community. So it's nice that it, it ties together with what he proposed also. Mm -hmm. 
I think very similar. And some some of your other proposals as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm, I'm You're welcome. Yeah, thank you. You have an art center now at the college? Um, we have spaces. We don't have a dedicated space that's okay. just arts. We have a main stage theater that we use. Most of oh, our yeah. spaces are multi-use, even the current spaces that we have. Um, the Guidry Center, if you've been in there, has a stage oh, in yeah. it. Mm -hmm. We'll do shows in there during the day. The curtains open and there's mirrors and it's dance classes. So most of our spaces are multi-use spaces. So we're, we're already, we already do that as, you know, as currently. So we're looking at expanding that. I see what you're saying. Good. Roberta. You, Madam Chair. So as an example, Sandra, would they be interested in uh, Franklin Art Association is no longer has a home. Um, they would need a small space where they could hang their artwork and perhaps have a small gallery. Would that be something that might be considered? A gallery would be amazing. I mean, we've, we've looked at turning some of our own spaces into a gallery, even our and even our buildings. We have students doing artwork, as I'm sure you've seen. Yeah. Um, but yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. You had a question? Yeah. Oh no. Okay. No. Anybody on this side? No questions no. down there? Okay. Jamie, do you have any questions that you want to bring forward? I'm all good. You're good. Okay. To be determined. <laughs> so what we'll be saying is for the 25th of June, we will be inviting people back to go over the, your proposal. Sure. Okay? So put that on your calendar. Get on my calendar. I'm it's texting on your our, calendar. I'm texting our all right. He's, I'm texting our chair to see what he says. He, um, he says, um, thank you so much for entertaining our, our proposal. We're very excited about it. Um, and he'll welcome to see you on the 25th. On the 25th. And we'll probably have more specific questions. And sure. I'm sure you will, too. OK? Great. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. We're all set with questions, Thanks folks? For jumping in, Sam. OK. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. No welcome pressure. <laughs> No pressure. We didn't bite. Thank you so much. <coughs> okay. All right. Let's see here now. HFA and TMC Properties. Hello. 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 I'm up here. So my name is Sharon Charwick. Um, I live at 170 Brook Street in Franklin, and I'm an architect at HFA, which is located at Mosley Mills. Um, I'm only here to represent HFA. Um, TMC is a partner of ours. We work with TMC. They are developers in town. We work with them on multiple projects. And I will say that when we saw the expression of interest, we were really excited. We have a lot of architects in our office that are local to Franklin. Um, and so immediately we got together as a group and we said, we definitely want to put something together and present it to everyone. And we reached out to TMC and they were excited about the opportun opportunity as well. And that's how that partnership came about. Um, I don't know if you, you're, we're not gonna pull up the presentations right now, so I'll just talk you through it. We okay. really looked at it from an architectural perspective and we saw two potential paths that you could go down. Again, really not knowing some of those big questions about what you wanted. We were looking at, you know, what would we envision? Um, the first option seems to be very aligned with what I'm hearing tonight. Um, as local Franklin residents, we also felt very passionately about the building. Some of our architects' children have gone to Davis there as well. And of course, we just love historically significant buildings. So the first option is an adaptive reuse. And basically, um, similar to a lot of the other proposals, the primary function, we're calling it the Davis Thayer Center for the Arts. And there's two main focuses. One is keeping the building and celebrating the historic nature of the building and also keeping the ball field and enhancing the um, youth activities that go on in the ball field. So there's a couple different components of that that are outlined in our proposal. For the building itself, we felt that some things that we could do architecturally that would be important would be to activate that front lawn, really make it a space with a lot of engagement. Um, in our proposal, you'll see um, big sculptures in the front lawn and another significant element is a large balcony across the front. We thought the first floor would be used as a fine dining. Um, so we would have a restaurant along the front of the first floor that would have a really big patio. So there would be activities spilling out onto the front. There'd be a patio above. And the space already has a great commercial kitchen that could be renovated, deliveries off of, I think it's Union Street. So we felt like that would be a great use for the community. Um, then. 
in the basement. We loved the two-story space of the gym. We thought that could be a performing a performance area. We actually show some imagery with catwalks coming down and kind of opening up the wall. So when you're in the first floor, you view down into the basement area and someone there could be a stage down there and they could be performing. You'd have a multi-level performance area. There's also a very cool space downstairs that is currently accessed by a little stairway on the side that gave us some sort of speakeasy vibes and knowing that the building was built originally in the 1920s, we thought that there could be an opportunity for a speakeasy in the basement, either owned also by the restaurant or a third party. The second floor could house some function spaces. There's a beautiful media center mm -hmm. that would also be able to utilize that balcony that we've put on the front. So we see it as a mixed use building preserving the architecture of the existing building. We see dining, um, performance hall. We see a component um, for a municipal organization. We had thought at one time maybe the Children's Museum, but I do understand that they may have found a home. But it could be the Children's Museum, it could be the Franklin Arts Association. There'd definitely be space for galleries or studios. And there could be other business use in some of the upper floors. For the ball field, we thought we would renovate that with some first class amenities. We thought it would also be a good opportunity for potentially the Franklin Rec Department to relocate and build them a new building towards the back of the site. They would have direct access to the ball field, new playground, and even possibly an area for food trucks. So again, really just trying to activate the space for the use of the community. Um, because we wanted to look at all the options, we had a second option that we looked at, which we called facade preservation and redevelopment. We wanted to just look at the idea of what it would look like to provide multi-family housing, which I don't know if that's something you want to entertain, but again, we just thought, let's take a look at it. But we did not want to, we did not want to abandon that beautiful facade that has such significance. Right. So it is a proposal that maintains the front facade and then builds a more dense site, which provides multi-family housing, but would also have some social gathering spaces and performance spaces. So. Um, that is another direction to go in. But based on the, some of the feedback I'm hearing today, the first proposal may be something that we wanted to develop further once we got more feedback from you. Are you talking to lease this? Um, so some of the financial questions I would have to defer to TMC. Okay. Okay. Um, we'll definitely be prepared to come in on the 25th and talk about it. Then please do. Yeah. Um, I believe they would be open to all of these types of conversations. I think there's a lot of potential on the space. And um, again, we're very passionate about the building and what could be done there for the community. Mm -hmm. So um, I'd love to get back with them and let them know that we want to hear all those options. Okay, that's good. Anyone? Great. Any questions? I love the idea of keeping the field. <clears throat> yeah, I know how um, used the ball field is and it's a, it's a special place for families and the idea of maybe having food trucks or other activities there, I think would be something that the town could preserve. Yeah, we desperately need You talked things. about the recreation department being yeah. there too. Between the field and the recreation, I don't know if there's enough room there for something So like we did that. provide a site plan that showed an area where we could do a two-story building. I know that they currently have a property on Beaver Street. Right. I'm not sure exactly um, what amenities they have there. We felt that a two-story, a new two-story building close to downtown, right next to a ball field, uh, would provide them even expansion space compared to what we believe their current facility provides. And again, it's just the idea of bringing some community organizations closer to downtown and giving them more access so that they could have you know, the ball field and the other facilities right there and just be more part of the center of the downtown as opposed to being on Beaver yeah. Street. But yeah. again, it was just a thought it could be, I know the town loves all of the youth organizations, the youth sports, so maybe it's the Franklin Soccer Association that's currently over um, in their building near downtown sports, maybe they, they would be looking to have a new facility. But something small towards the back of the site off of School Street. Yeah. Like an annex, you're saying, for, and keep the yeah. recreation yeah. department where it is. I mean, we'd be it's open to looking at different it's ideas. Again, I don't know which of these organizations are open to the idea of relocating or looking yeah, for a new facility, yeah, yeah. but um, just because the ball field is there, mm -hmm. the idea that maybe a, a sports organization could use that space as opposed to maybe a space they're in now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Now, you know, I just uh, through you, Madam Chair, to, just wanted to comment. We 
it seems like a gazillion years ago, but we did hear from the Franklin Rec Department, and at least in their initial interest mm -hmm. in the site through their uh, their chairman of their board. So it's a nice it's a nice tie in that you yeah. guys have done to at least say we'd explore the opportunity of bringing the Franklin Rec Department over. Mm -hmm. in whatever capacity that might be. We would definitely look at options. It could be within the main building if there if that made sense or it could be as a you know another Condition. building maybe as a phase two at the back of the site. Mm -hmm. It would really depend on we were thinking of the main building itself as more for the arts art exhibits, theater performances, music performances and the dining component would really be the, the main functions that would activate the space for the town. Yeah. Love it. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Um, Thank you. I think I didn't do this with Dean, which I would bring them back because I wouldn't want to do for one and not the other. To just check if there was anyone in the audience here or on Zoom, I didn't do either one of them that had any questions. So first the audience, do you have any questions or you're listening to all of this and it's very interesting. Big decisions are going to have to be made, that's for sure. Yes, name and address. Jackie Macy, 95 my question is, if either you or somebody else does your projects and it then you have to lease the land, what's, what's the status with taxable monies coming, coming to the town? Okay. I, I think, what, I think, I think that would go to Jamie. Yeah. Through you, Madam Chair. So um, Dean College, just so people know, this is maybe an urban myth buster coming down the road here, but they do pay property taxes right now. Um, so when I say nonprofits, um, nonprofits are tax exempt, just like religious organizations, school, schools, you know, that type of thing. Um, if it's a for profit, you know, private housing development or for profit um, commercial center. They pay property taxes, so it really would depend, Jackie, on the use, on the final use, as to whether they pay property taxes or not. Um, and I would just clause in the case of Dean College, I would feel pretty confident, given their recent history. Um, you know, every home they've purchased recently, they pay property taxes, the going rate like everybody else. The McGurrow House downtown on that uh, large building where um, Birchwood is, they pay property taxes on that building up to the same rate. Um, but ultimately, it depends on the final use of the parcel and whether they pay property taxes or not. And that also wouldn't preclude a pilot as well as a potential option? It wouldn't preclude a pilot with any organization. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, pilot, payment, in lieu of taxes, just right. in case people didn't know the yeah. acronym. For those that don't know. Yeah. OK. No other questions here? All right, do we have anyone on Zoom that has questions for us? No. The first two. No? No. Okay. Thanks All right, thank, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Okay. But I wanted to double check again with Dean just to make sure if anybody had any questions in the audience, no? Other than your question you just asked. But, and what about Zoom? For questions for Dean? No. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Next group that's here is Camford Property Group Inc. <coughs> Hi there. How's it going? Good. Uh, so, Brad Chaffee, I'm a Franklin resident. Uh, I own Camford Property Group. Uh, for the record, I will say I went to Parmenter Elementary School. Oh. <laughs> so my emotions are slightly different, but my high school <laughs> did get demolished. So, yeah. so I do, you know, I've had schools that now sounds like Parmenter right down the road. So, um, uh, you know, I, 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 you know, I bleed Franklin. I guess my, my, my business, we have 12 employees, and out of all 12, they were either born here or still live here. Mm -hmm. So we're very, very intertwined with everything that goes on here. I think um, just obviously you knowing a lot of folks in the room. So um, it, at first, when this, when this came out, it, it, it's kind of hard for a development company of, oh, all right, well, are you interested in it? But there's really no kind of maybe rules or what do you think, right? So it's really just kind of open book, and it can make it difficult. 
Um, our first, uh, and kind of in the packet, I gave two options, but um, our, our, our kind of first gut test on this was a lot what everyone else said too, was, all right, how do you keep the school? How do you do something that has educational services, community, things like that? Um, as uh, they mentioned, uh, the, the Museum of, uh, or the Children's Museum of Franklin. <coughs> so they actually are going to be my tenant. We bought the uh, Agway building on Cottage Street. So, um, you know, if all went according to plan, I would imagine by the time this process takes place and things get built and changed in a couple of years, that might be a perfect spot for them as a bigger place. So that was always in the mix for us. So we're going to rent out a you know, much smaller place now and see how that goes with the community, but we're pretty excited. Um, they're a nonprofit, uh, so that'll be our second nonprofit. We did the food pantry. so. Very big for us to continue that. So that was always something we wanted to do in the front, whether you know we kept the building or we took it down. I know that's a very uh, controversial question. It really just comes down to kind of finances and what people can do, and, and it's simple. I know sometimes I take out the emotion of it, and it's just a numbers game of what's better for the use and what goes in. Um, but ultimately, I think doing a mixed use in that building is, is you're going to see a lot of the same. So I don't think, depending on what developer comes in where, you're, you're going to see that same character of that building being a mixed use and services I just there's only so many things you can do to it maybe you can mix some housing into that but that's 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 probably about what you're going to get um, as far as the back of the lot goes uh, you'll see a lot of our proposals we have some renderings is the same as FHA you know kind of keeping green space something that's a theater having kind of a retail mixed use people can come they can you know hang out get food trucks very community type space in the back ties into the front um, our kind of layouts are the same. They kind of go on the street side of um, you know, Union Street and keep it open. And you know, we didn't talk to each other before we did this, so it's, <laughs> it's only so many ways you can you know move things around. Um, so I think they're great proposals. Uh, as far as leasing goes, um, we would be open. You know, we're open to to, to anything like that. I don't think. Um, I think sometimes it makes it a little complicated, right? You get the financing now, you're, you're financing assets to something that somebody else owns. Most of the time when it's a land lease, um, they're usually corporations. So, you know, they come in, they build a building, they don't really care what happens to it, and in 10 years they move on. And that person then takes the building and it goes from a, you know, a KFC to some type of other restaurant, and the building looks like a KFC restaurant. So um, we would definitely be open to it. Um, it's just one of those things I think it's just a little more strings attached of what that means but from a developer standpoint at the other side of it right we wouldn't have to come in with um, you know the ability or the cash to purchase it so that, which is a huge plus kind of what the Chris was saying so there's a there is a great benefit to that as well um, so yeah I, I'd be very open to that oh, that's good um, I guess as far as purchasing it goes it's probably the I guess the, the cleanest way um, I think the zoning part of something that I had a, a big question on, because obviously for what we'd want to do, you'd have to rezone it, and like any development deal, it would be contingent on getting it rezoned. So however long that would take, the council, and there'd have to be a lot of rules, and you know, going through the boards and all that stuff to get approved, and then the purchase takes place. So, mm -hmm. that's a long time. <clears throat> like the question, what would the zoning have to be? I mean, you could probably do commercial one. I would imagine it's close by, you know, or down something like that. But it's the only four, I think. So, um, yeah. Yep. Same thing. If you took the building right now, it'd be non-conforming. So next thing you know, you're putting mixed use in the building. It doesn't conform to the zoning. So it's a tough. It's a tough part of this. Jamie, what is it zoned for now? The, the SR Two? Four. four. Yeah. Oh. Single residential four. Duplexes and single family houses. Yes. Three families to maybe some to use. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Right ahead. Yeah, with a special permit if the law is better. Thank you, Brad. Um, no I don't have it in front of me, but I seem to remember that your proposal had some mention of senior housing, correct? I was a little vague. I put housing. Um, yeah. But senior housing, that front spot, absolutely. So that would be something we would think about um, there. And then in the back, I didn't necessarily say what type of housing in the back, um, but again, you know, I'd be open for any, you know, suggestions too, if the community wanted to see more of that, then that's something that we'd be able so to look at too. in a mixed use scenario, yep. you could have some, you know, theoretically, you could have some uh, 
senior housing there along with some of the other things discussed. Absolutely. Um, I mean, that would be great. I mean, I think this property really lends itself for a very true mixed use, and I think it'll work with this, you know, just its location and what it is. So I think that'd be great. The biggest challenge has really become conforming the space. Yes. And finding the capital money to make that happen because it's, it's quite, quite significant. It's a, and it's a big space. I mean, it's a 40,000 square foot building. It's not small. So it's going to take some serious capital to do that. Well, when you come back on the 25th, come ready to talk finance. <laughs> every, every, everybody needs to include that in their presentations because that's... So it's, really, I mean, it's, it's really where it's, it's going. It's really where it's going to drive. Mm -hmm. Like if you don't have the access to those capital funds, even in a lease scenario, to improve it, the town doesn't have that money to improve the building. That's why we're here. Absolutely. So, you know, it's going to be a huge factor. I know. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Brad, thanks for the proposal. Um, I, I think. A combination of these proposals for me is probably what gets the deal done in my mind. Um, I really liked HF, HF, HFA's proposal on the use of the existing building, and I think Brad's activization of the rear portion of the lot I think lends itself to a really schnazzy, to use a terrible word, schnazzy <laughs> development. Um, and, and I think, Ted, to your point about the financing, I think that's where we as the board can recommend to town council and the town by extension can leverage that step lease process to basically give the developers a leg up on not having to expend the capital to buy or take take ownership and then say well we're going to do this for a dollar for 10 years and then five or whatever but we need to have 20 senior housing you know 20 housing units mm -hmm. we can kind of put that into the mix part of brad's contingency as he was mm -hmm. talking about or any of the developers would have for contingency to kind of say this is what we want to see as the town and for that exchange you can have it for this low low price of for this period of time and then it steps up in the future. I, and from my standpoint, and I'm happy to listen to anyone else's opinion on this, working with other municipalities and public entities in my job, these are rarely money makers for those entities. This is gonna be a benefit to the town through what's available after the development's done. Mm -hmm. We're not gonna get a $100 million windfall mm -hmm. from the land and then pay for a new school. It's gonna be maybe pennies to the budget for anything that we do but the benefit would be what's here with the decisions and recommendations that we make. Right. I have a question. Do you manage your own properties? We do. Okay. Yep. So we build them. Um, so I do all the, get to come to all the meetings and do all the actual permitting and development mm -hmm. side of it. Um, and then my, my Canford, we actually are a general contractor. So we oversee the whole construction, self performance and work, and then we actually manage our properties. That mm -hmm. we do. So. Okay. Okay. Anyone down this end have any questions? No. Yep. I think they're all great ideas. The only thing is about elderly housing in the same place with the community center. Mm -hmm. I missed that. I mean, that yeah. would kind of put limits on both, maybe. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's done. I mean, if you look at YMCA models, Pat, where yeah. they have housing in the same building as programs, right, like gymnasiums. But those are usually can be bigger. Done. I don't know. But usually, aren't they usually bigger? I'm thinking. Bring what? Aren't they usually bigger? So, uh, sometimes. Yeah. If you look at some of the older ones yeah. in the country where they had housing for different programs. They had the gym and a pool and, and they yeah. had housing with different exits and entrances. Yeah. It can be done. Yeah. They also have the whole site to work with. Yeah. Like the senior housing could be a different building from I'd, pro yeah. I'd probably say yeah. probably put the seniors in the newer housing and have a different style housing and the old just would be easier to be more accessible. Yeah. You know, to make accessible. I think that it kind of could work well together when you think about it. Um, seniors and to have a ball field out there, not that they're going to play ball, but, but they're like going to be there it, yeah. and watch court. the pickleball. <laughs> <laughs> but they'll be able to watch the games and yeah. participate, yeah, you know, and, and see what's going on. I think yeah. that that could work out very well. And they're dying for umpires, so they need help. Uh, umpires, oh my, God. <laughs> I was going back to my train of thought, potentially split it into two, utilize the back and see the housing in the future. Yeah. 
Oh, that's a thought too, yes. Senior housing in the back, and then in the front. A reuse, a reuse of the building or whatever. With a mixed use. Or whatever comes yeah. out of the front. Yeah. yeah. But you gotta utilize it to potentially two parcels, potentially. You could, that's all I'm getting to. Well, okay, that's a thought too, so, Roberta. There's been a lot of research done on seniors and, and mixed housing and the benefit that it provides them to have this type of activity nearby where they don't have to get in a car to drive to it, where they can walk, where they can be part of it. Um, I think it could work very well. And where they could walk also to downtown, to downtown. downtown. Right. Um, the library. Yeah. I mean, there's so much right there. The museum. I mean, we've got central location there for. Yeah. Housing for the elderly. Well, Jamie, you don't have to say it. It's not built yet, but it's in the works. I'll be a senior in a year. <laughs> My AARP card. <laughs> <laughs> see how he has to the record part. <laughs> I wish I brought my computer with everything yeah. on. I, I didn't think any of the packets typed up. Okay, anything else, Brad, that you'd like to add? I just, I think that they have a great opportunity for a really, really nice kind of mixed-use development. I think, I think it'll so get too. there. Um, so just stay open to everything. I think you guys are doing a good job. It's not an easy thing to. It isn't. To really, it isn't. It's a lot. So, but I think it's a really great opportunity for something that people can really enjoy. Okay, I'm going to go to the audience. Do you have any questions? Yes. It's not really a question, just a comment. I just want to um, state, so I love the idea that the senior housing and the youth together, I have seen that's very successful. One thing that I want to just mention for everyone to consider is um, I believe that the existing building has a lot of hazardous material abatement that is a big concern. And so one thing that I know we looked at and whomever continues to pursue it should look at is the level of abatement required for um, living is I believe a significantly higher threshold than some of the other uses and it could be feasibly um, something that may not, so if you consider senior housing, it may be a benefit to consider that as an addition or a separate facility that's new as opposed to trying to renovate the existing building for the quality that you would want for someone to be living in. So that's just something that to That makes consider. sense, yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, so hold on, we oh, got one more. Okay venue here which would be the zoom anybody out there no no okay all right. you're all set then thank you so much brad. Thank okay you. brad thank, thank you. you well that takes care of listening to our three different ones that came um and has that brought up any other questions that people might have you know to to see what we have to do for the or by rather the 25th well, I think all three have to work together, <laughs> <laughs> right? Because it's that's the best of both. Of all Roberta, of I think it would be important to get the feeling of each committee member to determine what we think is next steps forward. I mean, you know, you've got your proposals that we've listened to. You've got another meeting coming up on the 25th. We should decide. As town council, uh, town ETA has said it's time to kind of bite the bullet and move on here. So. Okay, but you're suggesting what then? We start to make some decisions. Well, to start to say, what, what do we feel? I know what my opinion is. I'm guessing that, you know, everyone here has one. Well, let's go around and ask. If you have an opinion right now, that would be great. And we'll just take down some notes here, okay? Okay, let's start here. Um, sure. I really do like the idea of a mixed-use development. I do think one question that we should consider asking everyone is, what level of involvement with the town would they be willing to consider? Like if we just sign away a lease and then legally they could go and do anything they wanted, are we comfortable with that? Or are we gonna be a partner in it? And potentially, obviously each company does have the right to kind of ultimately decide whatever they want to do, but I do think it would be nice to have that upfront conversation with them to see if they are sticking with their plans if it turns out to go poorly and it's too expensive and they abandon it and something totally different comes in like are we just out of luck because we've signed this lease so I do think next week we should consider kind of inquiring along those lines and what level of comfort they are or they have with continuing to partner with the town if we do a lease okay those, that's good thoughts Chris 
Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Uh, I think from my position, uh, I'd be most in favor of uh, figuring out some type of lease scenario where the town yes. maintains lease, yeah, where the town maintains ownership of the land and property itself, and then structures a lease that's mutually beneficial, so that we can get a development. Uh, and I think that also gives us greater control uh, through the stipulations that can place in the lease on what can and cannot happen on the site. Um, and I think overall, it's a great disservice if we don't include housing in some way, shape, or form by utilizing that tool uh, and not having housing here. So whether it's seniors housing in one part of it, market rate, affordable, whatever it is, I think housing has to be a part of the mix. Um, you think it should be I think it should be mix. part of the mix. Yeah, okay. Um, as part of any development. All set with that? Yes, thank you. Okay. Great. Um, hi. So I am um, very much for both preserving the facade of the building as well as keeping the property. So I think the disconnect for me as I was reading through some of these earlier was the capital part of this. Like how are we thinking about funding if we want those two things to be true? So this conversation has been very helpful to me in understanding some of the leasing options that we might have. Um, so that I think is very important to me as we're thinking about June 25th and just getting really clear and understanding what um, for each of these proposals would the expectation be of um, the organizations that are putting these forward as well as um, what would the expectation of the town's um, capital uh, in providing some funding here be. Mm -hmm. um, I agree that I really love, like I think I'm really excited kind of philosophically about a lot of these ideas. I think a partnership with Dean sounds amazing. I think having a community space that's mixed use um, as a resident of Franklin sounds really exciting to me, but the big question just has been, what does that look like when we get down to, to funding and expectations there? Okay. Okay, Ted. First of all, thank you to all three uh, groups that spoke tonight, kind of impromptu, we put you on the spot, but it was very, very helpful. Um, I have a couple of I, opinions. I like the idea of uh, leasing the land for a long-term lease. Obviously, it has to be long-term to make it financially worthwhile to whoever the tenant is, right? If they're going to invest millions of dollars in infrastructure or whatever it might be, it's got to be a long-term solution, probably past all of our lifetimes. Um, but I do think a mixed-use space is an excellent idea particularly one that uh, addresses some of the art and performance concerns uh, that we have as a town. Um, I like the idea of the restaurant. I liked the idea of sort of it being a bustling hub um, for a lot of different activity, uh, utilizing the park. Um, we cannot, in my opinion, we cannot lose that park because we don't have enough of them as it is in the ball field. So I think that has to be factored in. I agree that not housing in general, and not um, what the state deems as affordable housing, but I would be very much in favor of low-income senior housing, because that is a critical, critical need uh, in our area. And that probably does have to be, to the woman's point, uh, a separate structure, uh, given the uh, huge issues that the 100-year-old building has with asbestos and lead paint and, and other things. So. Um, keeping the asset, Madam Chair, and mm -hmm. being able to work with a, a partner to do all of these things sounds very exciting. Um, we just have to be careful that it's limited, because we have limited funds as a town to be able to put into this for these capital improvements. Mm -hmm. So really the partnership is gonna fall financially a lot on the tenant. But if we're saving <coughs> 200 grand in occupation expenses, then that is valuable to us. Right, and, be, and being able to keep the asset as well. Um, I was actually less concerned about, uh, you know, the, the facade and the building. You know, for me, it was about looking at the asset and what was most, in, you know, what was going to benefit the community the most. Um, I think oftentimes historic and gets interchanged with old. Um, it's not, so I'm not quite sold in it being a historic building just because it's 100 years old, but... Um, you know, I hear the historic term used often, and I'm like, well, Ben Franklin wasn't born there, so I don't know what makes it historic. Um, but at the same time, I know that it means a lot to some people, and I certainly don't want to negate that. Uh, so thank you. Okay. 
I bet we could find that someone else went to school there. That was very important. And uh, all right, we'll see if they want to come put some money in. <laughs> <laughs> the the all that have died. Right. Well. <laughs> <clears throat> yes, down the end here we'll go. Um, I just think that uh, we need to maintain flexibility to allow whoever's going to be involved in the project to get theirs while the town also benefits um, because nobody's going to nobody's gonna stick their neck out if they're not getting something out of it. Right. So I think we just need to remain flexible in that regard. Um, as Brad said, you know, you need to be flexible regarding zoning. I think that's I mean, that's definitely the case because none of these proposals work as it's currently zoned. Um, so I just, I think entertaining all offers, understanding how we could finance or what the finances are of all of them and um, just continuing to remain open-minded to, to make things work for whoever comes in and for the town is, uh, is really good. Thank you. Roberta. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you to all of you who came uh, forward tonight to talk about your uh, interest. Um, when I first thought about this building, I, I honestly didn't have as much attachment to the facade or any of it, but after hearing all the proposals and the ideas that we could possibly preserve this building, I have to say I'm kind of liking that. How much that's going to cost and whether we'll be able to work that out, of course, is, is a big issue. What I do feel is that we need to do something with the building and the property. I don't see it just sitting there, abandoned, if you will, um, falling apart as the days and years go on. I'd rather see one of these proposals or something similar to it uh, be put into place so that we can make sure that um, we get a, a good use out of it. I do like the idea of leasing. I hadn't considered that, so thank you for all of you on the committee who talked about that. The idea that we could have this land going forward, again, I won't be here to see it, but you know, who knows, lots of others will. So um, thank you, and those are my That's feelings. So. And next. Um, you know, it, it's funny, I was to Roberta's thought, Nobody knew what they wanted to do with the building. Yeah. So my thoughts were just preserve it as is, take it down, salvage some of it, keep the property. But I do like the I do like the idea of potential um, partnership potentially, depends on the finances obviously, for um, leasing it. The idea, my 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 whole big intention is to keep the piece of property in the town's hands. Now if it, if it stays in our hands for another hundred years, Depends on when we can get our hands back on it, but that, that'll be a financial decision based on the lease. But the biggest, the biggest thing I, I did like about it is the reuse of it. If, if it's feasible, it's going to take a ton of money. Mm -hmm. And I'm in the business, and some of these people know it's going to take a lot of money to bring that building back to life. Mm -hmm. I would love to see some numbers, of how much they want to put on the table, and if the town, if they're going to look for the town to put some money on the mm -hmm. table, because that's going to be my final decision. Mm -hmm. Other than that, I would say just, you know, I hate to say it, I know it's not what everyone wanted to hear, but take down, salvage a lot of it, and maintain it as a uh, ball fields and fields for future use later on. They don't make land anymore, so we have to think yeah. of that 20 years from now. Okay. All set? Yep. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. I agree with everybody said. I like all three proposals today. And uh, that's it. I've said, I mean, I like all three. And it goes along with uh, Matthew Sajak's idea, too. Right. So all four of them together. Okay. Okay. Well, I think without you all knowing that we were going to ask you for your um, recommendation or whatever tonight, you did very well. And it's such a broad spectrum that we looked into. Um, I like the idea of the mixed use, and I like the idea of the ball fields there. Um, I personally like the, the front, the facade of the building somewhat being um, left. And I don't remember whose it was, and it's probably better that I don't. But I like the idea of seeing the windows that were there and the um, the restaurants on the bottom, you know, for the mixed use like that. I don't like the idea of the building coming down. 
mainly because I don't want to see just fields there. This is an entrance to the town of Franklin, all right? And I don't want to enter a town because there's a ball field there. I want to enter it because, oh, there's a nice restaurant there. Oh, they have games going on. They have senior housing here. And I like the way that a lot of the um, applicants, I guess we'll call them, um, what they did. And it, they all look very, very good. So for those reasons, um, I don't understand really so much about the lease because I guess I want to ask Jamie, if someone is to lease it, would we still have to put money into it too, or that's something that we would decide? Well, just, uh, just to add a little bit in there, the town doesn't have any money to spend on almost any of this. Um, so there's not really an option for any town subsidization here. I think to Chris's example earlier, um, I mean, look, CPA would qualify a little bit, yeah, but, at the ma but at the magnitude of the costs you're talking about here, you're, you're really, the town of Franklin is not going to be in a position to contribute any financial resources to this project under almost every circumstance, just so that's like really clear. Uh, in terms of a lease, I think as Chris could explain possibly better, you're trying to come up with a long-term agreement essentially for someone to upgrade and manage the property. And so essentially the tenant that would be there would essentially manage the property, take in whatever revenue they are for whatever use it is, and that's paying them a dividend on behalf of the parcel. Mm -hmm. So you're leasing it to them for a dollar for 50 years, say, just making that up. They pour the capital costs into it, the ownership is still with the town, but the management benefits profit basically, mm -hmm. from either an art center or a collaborative or housing, whether it's senior housing, artist lofts, market rate, affordable, it doesn't matter. But what does matter, and I think you heard it from all the applicants, is what that use is is important. Because we've just deba been debating housing. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you can't just have an affordable housing complex, because affordable housing does not get you bank lending, does not get you a lot of capital and then the rent doesn't really pay the bills, right? Because they're deeded affordable. Um, if you have market rate housing, that comes with its own consequence uh, because it's, you're using a public parcel for pure profit um, or artist lofts, right? Something like that would create maybe more of a vibrant uh, economy downtown, but generally speaking, most artists don't usually pay top, Brad's laughing, but most artists don't necessarily pay top tier. So then. When you get into the housing discussion, you're going to almost have to have another party subsidize something through the state or some other mechanism through 40B or another, another technique that we'd have to talk to as a community if housing is going to be a part of the equation you know, on that parcel. And I should finally say on that, that only is, I'm only speaking to, um, on housing, the actual building that's there. I think some other proponents it had some, even the rec center, but there's some space throughout the three and a half acres that the town could also decide you want to build another building on that parcel, whether it's for a recreation building or the Franklin Art Association or for others' uh, housing, you could have that. So, but that's how a lease works generally, Council of Pellegrini. You know, you're giving them basically free rent for a long period of time for them to make their profit, but they're capitalizing and improving on the property um, being modernized. Okay. Any other questions? Concerns? Roberta? Just, just one more quick thought. Um, do we need to involve Mark Sorrell and trying to figure out about leasing? Is that too soon? Is there anything we would benefit knowing? That's a fantastic question, Roberta. So we could have Mark come to, you know, I think one of the decisions, first of all, I just want to congratulate all of you. You decided you didn't want to sell the property and you don't want to knock down the building. So that's, that's, that's huge right thing. there, right? That's, those are two substantial decisions. Um, I think if you're gonna have proposals come in, and I don't want to speak for the, for the uh, folks who applied, but you're probably gonna to want to give them some time. Um, you may want to do two more meetings, uh, maybe two organizations a piece at an hour a piece, mm -hmm. but we also have to find another meeting date um, on the schedule and on the calendar tonight, or you could do all four in one night. But that's a question for the committee about, you know, yeah. 
Are we talking just four? We're not going to include Zajac? Well, he didn't, he didn't so really wasn't propose. Proposed, yeah. Yeah. I think you'd want to give, yeah. if, if, and I've heard enough consensus tonight that each of the proponents that spoke up, plus Penrose, who isn't here because we didn't invite them, he's, I mean, they're a pretty reputable developer that does do these projects in schools and historic buildings quite a bit. Um, you're probably looking at an hour, maybe a short presentation of an overview, maybe some financials and some questions and answer. You're looking at probably 45 minutes at least, um, you know, um, you know, per applicant. Um, if you want to do them all in one night, we can we can schedule the meeting at four o'clock or two o'clock. I mean, you know, there's a lot. I think that. But I you got up until the end of June, long. so. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I'm just share through you. Do you want to take? To look at Penfro's proposal, you want to take that off because it's, it's not going to be, it's very different from the other ones. No. You could. No, I think, though, that you had the three of them here and they were yeah. just here. Which one? At least the one we didn't hear from today. What? The one we didn't hear from today. Penrose. Yes, I didn't yeah. come. He didn't, he wasn't Did invited. I didn't invite any of them. I, just, I know. So right. I, and they're not really came. getting a fair opportunity. Yeah, you exactly. Yeah, you want to hear them out. Yeah. I think yeah, you want think. to talk to them. Yeah. They've done some pretty substantial developments. Yeah. I mean, exactly. Uh, Amy and I are both familiar with their mm -hmm. with their work. Okay, Chris. Uh, I think just to kind of back uh, piggyback on Jamie's comment there, our job, our charge is to make a recommendation to the town council. The town council would then flush these out, vet them financially, figure out all that. Like that's not right our role so i don't know if it's necessarily prudent or pertinent to have them come back and give us an hour presentation on mm -hmm. something that we ultimately aren't going to we're going to say we want to we want to lease it we don't want to knock down the building we'd like to see reuse we'd like to see mixed use we'd like to see some housing yeah. and say town council figure it out yeah, yeah. i don't we're not going to say c is going to be exactly. the best thing to go and move forward i, I think our job is to say yeah. what we just said we could do that now you could do that now just yeah. do that now this is exactly right you don't have to go through the financials. You don't have to do that. It really depends on how the committee wants to. And they're not going to be ready with financials in two weeks. No. And no. 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 So we would be the ones. Um, we would not make any recommendation to the council. Yes, yes we, we, did. Would. We, would. we would. We would. We would. We would. Yes. We would not sell it. Well, that's what I thought we yeah. were going yeah. to do. But, but not, we're not going to say Brad's development's the best. Yeah. Right. We would say this is what we see as the vision. Right. Yeah. And then the town council would pick up the torch and then go through all those steps. I think to Chris's point, you say, the committee decided they didn't want to knock the building down, they didn't want to sell the land, mixed use development is the preferable, um, if there's some housing included in it, most right. of the members, you know, yeah. most yeah. of the members, and you would, you know, we would draft it, but you would write up and vote on a summary to get to the council and say within these parameters. And just to the back to the question that Roberta asked about Mark Sorrell, I mean, eventually, even the financials, all of this has to go out to public procurement and a public bid in some sort of way anyways. So, you know, that's gonna, that's I think where Roberta's asking a question, she's right. Mark is the attorney is really gonna guide us on how a procurement like, would right. like, how a procurement like that would work. Do you need public procurement on a lease? Um, you need a council, well, first of all, to make sure you're getting the best deal, mm -hmm. it's probably a best practice. The council has to enter into a lease right. with any tenant. So you'd have to approve it. Um, I'd have to check with Mark to double check to see if you have to actually bid out that lease. That's what I was asking. I, mean, I know you need to to sell it, but I wasn't sure about it. Yeah. Right. That's so a good question. Through Madam Chair, would it be appropriate, yeah. as Jamie said, to have them draft the decision yeah. referencing what we've discussed that we would then vote on? Yeah, we're done. Well, we really didn't make decisions. We did. We, said yeah, we did. We did. did. We did. We did our job. You know, yeah. we, we wanted to keep, mm -hmm. but keep. we didn't make a, a recommendation are. as to what should be there. Did did we? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah we, did. We, did. we did. We did. We yeah. did. Well, we've talked about housing. We've talked about um, mixed use, having re restaurant and different things, first floor and that. We talked about these things, but are we ready to vote on these things? I'm really not sure. I'm yes. sorry. I don't You're think right. it's a vote. He's going to draft. draft. Yeah, yeah. Draft, draft the decision. Right. The thoughts, right. And then we'll right. review it at the next right. meeting. Right. And then okay. I think we right. vote at the next yes. meeting. Excuse me. Right. After we've all seen it and vetted it. Yes. Okay. Uh, and, and we and recommend we changing the zone, too? No. 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 Leave the zone. No. Zone goes into our deal. No, the zone. Oh, the zone? Recommended. Yeah. 
I don't think at this point you would okay. do that. I think it would depend on the use as well, right. the final use. Yeah. I have a question. Uh, Madam, One second, honey. Okay. Ma Madam Chair, I mean, everything's been said, but I think in fairness to Penrose LLC, since we didn't do a formal invitation, yeah. can we at least ask them, Jamie, yes. to come to the 25th? <clears throat> Yes. to have the same time as everybody else before us to talk about yes. their proposal. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, at the next meeting, I do think it would be in our best meeting. interest to make a recommendation to the council because our charge has already been extended and, and coming up. Agree. Um, okay. And then maybe the groups that spoke tonight, if they're invited to come back, if they want to make any additions to their proposals, yeah, but they won't uh, have that's fair. An hour, right? right. Like we're not at that That's point fair. yet, but if they regroup and come back in fairness and would like to have 10 or 15 minutes or you know, someone else to come speak on financials, they certainly can. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I, I think. Yeah. We'll keep yeah. it limited, but I like that idea. We can At least they can supplement it because they weren't technically prepared yeah, tonight. Fair. Exactly. And we'll ask them to right. keep it short. And, yeah, you know. it's, the, it's the fairest yeah. thing to do. Sure. Okay, so idea. they will all be invited yeah. back again. Yeah and be able to speak and whatever. Um, Oops. Just like an idea, so we're comparing like apples to apples. Is it possible to come up with like three questions that we want everyone to answer? Like, would you entertain a ground lease? Like, what will you maintain the facade? And like, maybe one other thing. So when we make the recommendation, we at least know that we're comparing like these three people that have these, obviously it's not, binding or anything yeah, but it might yeah, just help us idea. frame our opinion and know that the people we're submitting at least have these initial thoughts on it i don't know that's a good idea that's i can also idea. send them those yeah you know yeah. if the so group agreed time. tonight on the yes. i mean i think i've heard yeah. commonly about a ground lease mm -hmm. uh, or just a lease i've heard about the facade and also the financials mm -hmm. and if i can prep all of them with that and say anything you have on that at least um yeah, because it, it might be helpful to have it like in front of us, like some actual Absolutely. answers before we make right. a recommendation. I think that's a good thought. Yeah. Good and, thought. I, and I think to Patrick's point about Penrose, their project was the only one not mixed use. Right. So I would just maybe add that as a fourth question. Sure. Yep. Right. Would you exactly. entertain a mixed use development? Exactly. Because Penrose may come back and modify their. Right. Goals. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. okay. I mean, ultimately, Madam Chair, all of these groups, because this was only an expression of interest, ultimately, if we wrote a request for they proposals, are at least which are going to be far more elaborate, which are going right. to get into financials, and then they're, whether they lease it or buy it, they're going to have to sort of be a bidding process mm -hmm. of some kind, right? So there's still a lot of steps uh, to be done, but I think right. <clears throat> to, it, in the notes, if, if all four groups, I think I heard everybody at least express some interest in a housing component, whether it's a... Uh, you know, separate building or whatever, but I think if the groups, just to keep it fair when we're talking mixed use, um, examine that when they come back to talk to us. Absolutely. Good. That's a great question. Good, good, good. Anyone down this end? No. Okay. You had um, mentioned something about voting, um, and I was going to ask you to make a motion. I think we just discussed well, that. I think you just had discussed that it was what, right. like, what Jamie was going to give direction to. That's why okay, so no motion is needed for that. Okay. Board consensus, right, Greg? Yeah. yeah. I think they are. I do too. Okay. okay. Does anybody on the group feel like they're we're not going in a direction that you wanted no. with what we've talked about tonight? But can I can I do add one thing? As to Chris's point, I didn't add it to mine. Was the um, elderly housing? as well as part of the component. Yeah. And yes. Not just affordable, the, elderly. Yeah, too. elderly housing, yeah. that's why I was thinking. Elderly and affordable. The, like I said, split the property to two potentially and have the back as a, but just as, as if it's gonna go down that road, I think mm -hmm. it's something we should entertain of, of at least here, yeah. if possible. Okay. Yeah. Uh, really quickly, I would just, uh, my recommendation would be to leave the, is to not get into the specific housing yet. Flexible. Because I think that's, restrictive right. um, again the affordable issue the financials the banks right and I think the community also has to think long and hard about who you're putting where and why mm -hmm. right elderly housing is always going to be at the top of everybody's list there's a big struggle these days with turnover units in town we're trying to build um, elderly housing obviously um, down near Eaton Place 
But you're also talking about downtown Franklin, right? And mm -hmm. are you putting seniors closer to where they need to be? Or are they further away from there you're going to be? Or do you want a different demographic in downtown versus one other? And I think the more you split it up, the more restricted you're going to become and the less opportunity you have for all of them to be able to adapt to that. So um, I think that obviously senior housing is going to be number one on probably most people's lists. Um, and I'm just thinking down the road. I'm not thinking like next year. I'm okay. saying like if it ever comes to fruition, you know, eight to ten years, you have a place yep. to put some senior out. Yep. That was just my thought. Yep. Okay. And then wouldn't there be some grant money available if we did senior housing? I know it's difficult, but... Uh, well, probably not. I mean, I'm just going through my experience being labeled Mr. Franklin Ridge by every yeah. congressman in New England because I see them and I try to advocate for it and we're only two-thirds of the way there. Grant money is just very, very hard to come by. It's very competitive. I, although I will say with the Governor's Housing Act, you know, down the road there may be some additional incentives that may be in that if that housing bond bill is able to pass. So um, I wouldn't count on it. Uh, okay. But if something down the road comes up, you know, you know we're going to go all in for it. Absolutely. I brought up a good point, Madam Chair. Jamie, the, there's nothing sitting down the road with all of these uses that the lot really could be subdivided, yeah. right? Where mm -hmm. one entity is doing the mixed use project that's and correct. another entity is doing the housing. Yep. If that's what, you know, down the road ends up happening. Like, yep. We don't have to find one group that can do everything. That's correct. Yeah, you could subdivide the so lot. Conceivably, the nonprofit group that's over at St. John's could, once this is more talked about, may say, yeah. hey, you know what? We'd love to partner with you for senior housing mm -hmm. under their nonprofit umbrella for a portion of the property. And then one of these groups would continue with the mixed use. So you also have the housing authority in town. You also have Habitat for Humanity, who we've you know, invited in and brought into the community and is now doing a project here shortly. Mm -hmm. um, so you do have a lot of other entities that you could partner together and you could subdivide the land for sure. Th that was my point of trying to get two ah. appraisals. That's what I was leading to way back. Okay. Lots of options. There are. There are. So now we're talking not to meet until the 25th? That's right. correct. Okay. It sounds like that. And everybody can make it that night from the poll. Mm -hmm. That should be done though. Yeah. yeah. We can all meet the 25th. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 With the goal of making a recommendation at the end of that night, it sounds like, Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. Then we can go enjoy our summer. And you think we're, <laughs> you think we're going to be ready yes. for the 25th to yes. make a recommendation? Yes. 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 Yeah. Well, it'll be interesting. Yes. We'll certainly try to, that's for sure. All right, anything else we want to talk about? Uh, just to uh, mention that tomorrow's a special election, so everyone should go out and Absolutely. vote. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's it. Get out there and vote, everyone. We are now if producing this in collaboration yeah. with Franklin TV so and yeah. Franklin yeah. Public Radio. Yeah. Yeah. Right, this you. podcast yeah. is my yeah. public service yeah. action for Franklin, but we can't vote. do it okay. alone. You can always Aye. use your help. How can you help? If you can use the information that you find here, please tell your friends and neighbors. If you don't like something here, please let me know. Through this feedback loop, we can continue to make improvements. And I thank you for listening. For additional information, please visit franklinmatters.org. If you have questions or comments, you can reach me directly at suresteve at gmail.com. The music for the intro and exit was provided by Michael Clark and the group East of Shirley. The piece is titled Ernesto Manana, copyright Michael Clark and Tin Type Tunes in 2008 and used with their permission. I hope you enjoy. By the way, you can also subscribe and listen to Franklin Matters Radio on your favorite podcast app. Search in podcasts for Franklin Matters.